Today I'm going to be working on moving the radiator back. Looks like it has to go back about an inch and a half, two inches, and then to trim the front of the frame off to be able to get the bumper brackets on to put the bumper back on the front. So let's get started on that. I did get the column in. I just need to you know, do all the final mounting. But down here, it's much, much more room than the other one had to be able to get to that arm there. So the 28 inch column works much better than the 33. Look at that, it's starting to look like a truck again. Put the fenders and the hood on to kind of judge where I need to trim the front of the frame and how to trim my core support. So that's on. And it's just loosely bolted in right now. But it gives me a good idea. I did have to trim quite a bit out around the core support. I'm going to make a filler piece in there. Got the column in and where I want it. So with this Vic steering arm, I did have to cut into the dash just a little bit. Otherwise, the steering wheel would be down in the seat. So the column is in. That looks pretty cool. I, I don't think the steering wheel is going to work without some sort of adapter. But I've got my eye on another steering wheel. A steering wheel out of a 40 Ford with the uh, old V8 logo in the center. I really like those. So I'm thinking about just doing that because they do have those with the uh, GM style or aftermarket column style adapters. The adapted splines in them. But it's getting there. I did fill in the floor piece where the old column went through and just kind of patched up more of the inner firewall there. Now let's talk about paint. I've been thinking about mulling over what color to paint the truck or to even paint the truck because the patina on it is awesome and I love it. I think it's really neat. But as you can see, some of the areas there needed patching. Uh, they always tend to rust, right? The unibodies tend to, and even some of the regulars, but tend to rust right there where the bed meets the sides. Not crazy about people wrote their names in it. This thing sat outside of a bar in like the 80s or 90s. Drunk people broke the windshield, broke the headlights, broke the quarter windows, and scratched their names into the side of the truck. If it was a cooler story as to why there's names scratched into the side of the truck, I'd probably leave it, but just drunk idiots beating up a poor old F100. So what I've decided I'm going to do for paint is to go get color matched on that front fender over there where it's a little bit lighter, a little more oxidized, and then paint the rest of the back of the truck like that. But leaving the patina at the top of the bed and maybe work some patina in. I do that on the motorcycles that I build, the aged ones. I basically just do kind of a fade blend type thing into the old patina and old color. And then that way it'll just look a lot better than that. So that's the plan. We're going to keep it as it is. Um, that way I don't have to paint the interior. The interior's aged out in a really neat, neat way. Um, all the, you know, the sweat from the arm marks and just the history involved in how that paint got that way. I like to, I'd like to keep that. Plus that, that color is just, that's a cool color. Here's some of the names I was talking about that are scratched in there. Lisa S. There was some name there that they crossed back out. Lisa Stratman. Lisa Stratman, if you are watching, I hope you're proud of yourself. Picking on a poor defenseless F100. I'm just going to color match that front fender and then paint all this, that color, in a, uh, not a matte finish, not a gloss finish, but semi-gloss type. You know, to kind of keep that oxidized, oxidized look. And then just blend it in with the rest of the patina on the top of the bed. And then blend it with the bottom. So it'll end up more or less looking like this side of the truck. Which I really dig. So when I ran the info off the trim tag of the truck, the original color comes back as starlight blue. I was talking to another Ford owner. He says, no, it's skylight blue. But you be the judge here. Starlight blue versus skylight blue. See, I'm not seeing much of a difference. I don't know if maybe it was something that they changed the name, Ford changed the name after 1961. 
to Skylight. And it's just the same color, just with a different name. If any of you Ford buffs out there know, weigh in on this. I'd like to know. It's just out of a curiosity because I can't, I couldn't just go get, you know, Starlight Blue or Skylight Blue and then put it on here because it would look horrible. It would be completely different because the oxidation and the age, you know, has changed the color. But it's just more of a curiosity thing. So if you know, weigh in on this. To move the radiator back, it doesn't get much simpler than this. Um, it's a pretty easy setup here. The way that the Crown Vic radiator originally sits, it kind of sits at an angle. kind of kicks out a little bit. So what I did was I took, I've already cut off the uh, frame extension there. But I undid these three bolts on either side. And then undid the, there's a cross member thing here, a cradle that the radiator sits in. Remove that. And it's just as simple as pushing it backward. And I pushed it back two inches. Definitely not going to be easy to change serpentine belt or anything. I mean, you know, if I have to change a timing chain or anything, definitely going to have to, you know, pop it back off. But I just uh, drilled and tapped new holes, threaded them. Uh, the original was the 8 millimeter by 1.25. So I just drilled and tapped and used the same bolts for both that and the radiator cradle. And by moving the radiator cradle back, it straightened the radiator more perpendicular there. It was really, really simple. And the only other thing I did was I trimmed the uh, upper radiator hose a little bit because it was going to kink otherwise. But that worked out well. Super simple. I always like it when that happens. I'm leaving the air conditioning compressor connected. Uh, it's still installed and connected because I do plan on using AC down the road. I've also got the condenser up here and um, got all the lines in a box as well as the canister that usually goes down there. So when I do get a classic air kit, I just have to buy the half kit, half the price. And I'll, I'll be able to have the AC, but it looks, you know, has that classic look instead of trying to figure out something to do with the Crown Vic AC and make it look halfway decent. Because the whole idea for the interior of this thing is to go as period correct as I can with it. So being able to use the classic air system is great. And I don't have to spend $1,400. You know, it's more like five, $600 to get that classic look and still have AC. I'm setting up my horizontal bandsaw for a 45 degree angle cut because I'm making a modifying the original core support and putting this in and I want to have some gussets for side to side force that'll be out here on the front end when taking hard turns and stuff. That's what the core support's looking like. Obviously, I'm going to fill in this area and then these open areas on the side. sound okay well that should be plenty strong enough wrapped on it a couple of times it's super strong it's not moving so that is done now I'm just gonna start making filler pieces make sure the air gets where it needs to go <laughs>
finished up so now we'll have air going where I want it to go and keep the rain out. Get that thing painted up and mount it. It's on there and it looks good. I'll still probably do some rubber inserts here and on the other side and across the top just to keep rain out because the ECU does sit under the hood there. Keep all the water out and the air going where I want it to go. Probably a little filler there, a uh, little rubber thing there and on the sides. But yeah, core support is done. And I figured since I had the core support on, might as well throw the grill on there. That looks good. By stripping down and painting it, I would lose little things like this, little touches like this farmer's weld repair on this fender that he obviously did with a stick welder. Now, who knows how many years ago. Just little stuff like that makes this thing just neat. West Side Motors, Orange City, Iowa. Well, that's where I'm going to leave this one. I uh, got a lot done, got a lot of other little things to do. I've got a package coming from Carolina Classics that I'm very excited about. That's going to be fun. We will be doing some wiring. We'll be doing the brake pedal, getting that where it needs to be. Uh, the steering, I've been waiting on the U-joint for that for a, like a week, week and a half. Uh, but it's on its way and it's getting close. So for now, I don't have a whole lot more to do until those parts get here. I'd also like to say thank you for all the likes and comments and subscriptions. Uh, it's pretty cool to see that, enjoying it. And it's nice to see you guys are enjoying it too. So yeah, until next time, see you later.